Welcome everyone, Kelly here from KB Auto Tech and Adventure and today we're in my shop, I got my 2020 Tacoma with me and we're going to change out the grill, so let's get at it. Hood's open, so let's get going. We've got a few things, very simple to do. We got two 10 millimeters bolts right here. We have two clips on these outside corners and we have to unclip this harness right here. So you're going to need yourself a 10 mil of some type little flat screwdriver and a pair of pliers. Let's remove those two 10 mils. Okay, got those bolts put away. Now we're gonna unclip these wires. So basically a little pinch, it will push the wire back through. A little squeeze and push through. And then we got this white one here, a little squeeze and push through, pretty simple. Next we have these clips. All we're gonna do is put the flat underneath here and just pop it up and pull that out. So these clips are pretty basic, pretty simple to remove. We'll get this one on the other side here, and then we have four along the bottom, and we'll get those as well. One thing that I'm gonna add here is this harness that we unclipped, this, the one with the white connector. We're gonna go ahead and have to undo that, and it's a pretty simple just push clip right here. Give it a little squeeze, and it should come off. If you're squeezing this and it's not coming off right here, we can go ahead and just put the screw See if we can see that, the screwdriver underneath and just release the clip that way and it'll come undone. We're gonna go down to the bottom, we're gonna get those four clips so we can get ready to pull this off. So let's get in there. Well, we're basically ready to remove the grill. This next part seems a little bit sketchy, but it's really not a big deal. Just be prepared for it. That way you're not gonna scratch your truck or do anything silly. So put my hand under here. Put basically my hand under here, and I'm just gonna give the grill a good a tug. And that's that, just make sure you're not scratching your truck or dragging it down to the bottom. Just pull up and give it a little firm uh, tug. It's good to go. Just wanted to quickly show this part and correct myself. All these outer perimeter screws, you actually don't need to remove. You only need to remove the ones around the center. In order to separate these two pieces, we have all those clips that we have to undo. Find a place where you can kind of get some pressure. And what I'm doing here is I got my hand underneath, so I'm applying a little bit of pressure. Not enough to break it, you gotta be careful. And I'm just lightly applying a bit of pressure to the tabs and squeezing them and popping them as I go along. Well, I've gotten the bottom, now we're just gonna have to get the top here. Well, I think that's it, it should be free. Now let's just see if we can get that little harness. There we go. Now we'll just take this and we'll put it aside for now. Two things that we're definitely going to need is our front camera and our sensor here. I think for now, I'm gonna go ahead and unclip the camera. Being tricky here, we'll give it a little squeeze. There we go, the lock tab was being just a little bit tricky. Got this little tab here. It's supposed to press on this and this is supposed to lift, but it didn't. So I just kind of got from the side and just gave it a little bit of pressure. Or if you have a hook, you can kind of get under here with a pick or whatever. Anyway, that's undone. Two Phillips screws. We'll note that the camera has a little arrow on here, right there, pointing up, so you know which way up is. So we'll just set this aside. We've got two 10 mils here. All right, looks like I need to undo this Phillips screw here as well. That's free, be very careful with this thing. It's very expensive, I'm gonna assume. There we go, and it's free. So that should pretty much do it for this. We'll put it away. Save it, you may use it, turn your vehicle back to stock down the road. Well, here's my grill. I chose to go with the matching uh, cement color on the front. I don't know, seems okay. I mean, black would have been fine too, but I thought that uh, add a little bit of color to the front, see how it goes. Next, we're gonna have to do a few modifications. Obviously, we're gonna be adding in the Raptor lights. We need to put in the front facing camera and we gotta put in the sensor. Uh, this one has the, the piece for it right here. So let's see how this all fits. Okay, something I didn't notice right off the bat, and that is on the inside, let's see if you can make sure you guys can see this, on the inside, we need these two nut inserts to mount the sensor. So essentially these just slide off, and we'll take those and we'll transfer them over to the new piece. So the sensor has some alignment pins. I don't think you could get it wrong. So if we try to put it backwards, yeah, that doesn't work. Take our two 10 mils here. Give that a light snug so it doesn't fall out, obviously. It doesn't need to be super tight, I'm gonna assume. Same thing, snug that down. Now right here, 
This looks like there's a hole here for this harness right here. It's a little bit of a stretch, but it should plug in, but I'm not going to do that yet. The next step we're going to have to do is modify the front grill for the camera mount. I bought this camera mount from Taco Vinyl. As far as I can tell, they're the only one doing um, basically a, you know, a hard mount. Uh, everyone else I've seen has basically done some sort of you know, home type you know, fab or fix or whatever to mount the camera. These are the only one I know of. Maybe there's more, you let me know if there's more. Anyway, so I got this from Taco Vinyl. I'll see if I can leave a link in the description here for you. So essentially we're gonna have to cut this little guy out of here to make this work. The screws seem to be lined up perfectly. So let's just quickly take the camera out of its mount. See, these are pried in. A little locking clip here, locking clip there. Pull that off. A little bit wet, it's raining outside today. There we have it, camera, interesting. Just curious how this is gonna work here. Camera came out, no problem. We can put the screws back in. We wanna use him, I guess we're gonna have to modify it. I hate modifying things permanently, but I mean, I guess it's not really the end of the world. Just gonna take off this little bit of glue tape. Lay that into position. Take our two Phillips screws. Ah, here's the problem. That hole's not big enough. All right, so that looks pretty good. There, you can see it installed there. I think now we can go ahead and plug these in. Pull this around and we will plug that in here. Plug our camera in. That's a little bit tight there, but that's no big deal. And uh, too bad, we don't have anything for this one. But I guess we'll figure that out. Can't really see what I'm doing here. I'll turn it this way. I'm just lining this up. Using this just as a straight edge, give myself a nice line to go with. Well, what I can see here is that these tabs aren't quite locking because it can't come far enough back. And the reason being, I don't know if you can see this here, it's not bottoming out on the metal. Uh, let's see, I can try and get this close. It's not bottoming out on the metal. It must be bottoming out on the camera. It's not quite spaced correctly. So all in all, I mean, it looks like a pretty clean install. It looks like it should be there. It's not bad. These little ends could be you know, cleaned up, maybe made a little bit nicer looking. No big deal. I would say it's satisfactory for the most part. But what I'm going to do just for security wise, this thing seems to be on there, but if I tug on it enough, it will come off. Now, that's pretty firm. I highly doubt it's gonna go anywhere. But just in case, I might just loop a very small zip tie, basically from one side, one side directly to the other. That way, if it happened to pop off, it couldn't actually physically fall off. So maybe I'll just do that real quick. So essentially what I've gone ahead and done here is created a lock here with the zip tie. It's basically, it, it's never coming off. It's even if it, you know, there's no way even if it fell off, I mean, it's not gonna, it's not gonna come off. So that thing's nice and secure, zipped on there, the cover's on. Well, we're almost there. We got the sensor installed. We got that camera and bracket installed. That's all said and done. One more thing we have to modify. If you want to run a triple Raptor light, no problem. But if you want to run it in the four sequence, you're going to have to modify your lights a little bit. So let me show you exactly what we had to do to that. I'm not going to bring you through the whole thing, but I'll show you exactly how I did it and we'll get those clicked in and we're ready to get this grill installed back on the vehicle. So I've chosen to go with four lights. Now, all in all, this is pretty straightforward. So I'm going to go two, space, four. Put these through. Push the light and it just clicks in. Push the light and it just clicks in. Now what's gonna happen is if you try to go on these outer ones, cause they're slightly different than these inner ones. For one, these are a little bit tricky to get through, no big deal, they're quite tight, but they don't wanna lock, they don't wanna lock in. The reason being, being is these holes are different than these ones top and bottom. So what we end up by needing to do is take away this edge. And if you can see that right there, on the top and the bottom, we need to get rid of that edge. Now how I ended up, went up about that is I grabbed a 
I use this grinder. You can use you know, a Dremel, something like that. You don't even need, you could use it just a file. And all I did was very lightly went along here to like made a little bit of clearance, almost flush and along there. Then I took my file and then I just lightly filed it, making sure not to drag it across the light. And once we've done that, and there we go. Now we can get the end one. So like I was mentioning earlier, those perimeter screws, you didn't have to undo. The ones that are on the insides are the ones for the front grill. This insert no longer has the holes or the retainers for the screws, so it is not screwed in. It is only by all your clips. So make sure it's firmly pressed together and then all your clips are hanging in there and doing a good job. Now that being said, the Raptor lights come with this pretty handy dandy harness, plug and play. There's, there's all of our lights. And at the very opposite end, it has basically a power and a ground for us to connect to. Now you can do this in the vehicle if you'd like, but there's a plenty of room actually, but you're kind of working there. I can basically see what I want to do already. I'm gonna run the lights. There's holes underneath here, so I can clip basically to everything along here. This is our factory harness. It has no longer a plug here. We could probably run it and clip it. In the very beginning of the video, we undid this white harness and we know that connects to the factory plug. And let's see if we can tidy this up a little bit with some zip ties. Kind of crazy. As you can see what I've done here is I've just laid my harness in here, just cleaned it up nicely with a few zip ties and the harness is here. When we plug it in, we can run it to the appropriate place, but this is all done. Camera back in there, harness in, Raptor lights in, sensor in, pressed on, bolts are all in, screws I should say are all in. Let's go ahead and stick this on the vehicle and we're basically almost there. Okay, we're ready to install the grill. I'm just gonna quickly get it into position, push it in until it clicks. Then I'm not gonna bore you with all the installation. You've seen how it came out. Put all the screws back in, put all the clips back in, put those couple screws back in, put the connectors in and away we go. So let's go ahead and let's get that done real quick. All right, so let me quickly show you how we're going to do this wiring so we can quickly install this fuse tap and get the end of it done. So what I've gone ahead and done here is let's have a look. So from the grill, I have the wire basically down in there, down along the battery, under here, along the fuse box. Just gonna cut in and note here that I ended up by running the wire underneath the fuse box and not around it. Let's go ahead and we're gonna go into the fuse box and relay panel here, and we're gonna find the appropriate fuse. First thing I'm gonna recommend, Let's go ahead and let's disconnect the battery because we're going to be undoing some of the wiring in there. And yeah, it's always safest just to have the battery undone. So let's go ahead and do that. Cables off. This panel has a couple of clips, one there, one here, and one there. Now we're gonna end up by trying to feed the wire in through this unit here. So let's go ahead and unclip these wires. This little connector right here, you go ahead, just pinch it. This one here, this one here, and this one there. So what we're gonna find here is, see so yeah, this lock tab here. We go ahead and push that there. We can pull that up. Takes a little bit of work here. Pull this whole harness up. Try to be gentle with it. And now what we're gonna see here is right here, we pull this around, it will open up the little door now it's taped together here. All right, so essentially what I decided to do here was, is I slightly slit the tape right here. Open this guy up a little bit, and I'll put the power right to here, and I'll add it in, make sure it's inside, clip that back on there, and then we'll quickly just wind some tape around this here again, and it'll be a nice clean install. No one will know the wiser and our power's inside. A little bit tight in here, but we can probably get some tape back. With all of those connected, I'm gonna feel free, go ahead, put the battery terminal back on, get our negative back on there, tighten it back down. So I chose to go with this last one here. This is basically one of the headlight ones. And there, we have this guy to install. Just gonna go ahead and I'm gonna keep it inside here. So let's just run it, well, 
and we can run it about that long so we'll cut it about there go ahead cut that get our strippers go ahead install that there grab our crimper crimp that on there nice and solidly give it a little tug normally I would probably hit this with some you know maybe some tape or something like that I don't know it's inside this cover I think it'll probably be pretty good and I'm just gonna lay this in here like that I mean I don't really think it needs to be secured down shouldn't you know shouldn't really go anywhere or do anything so we'll leave it just sort of like that we need to install our ground wire which I have ran right over here already before we go any further we could check this as well and just make sure everything is good you can see we have a nice little ground spot right here we can go with the factory ground location no drilling pull that 10 out of there we'll take the wire it's got way too much we'll cut that off and we will strip this to the appropriate size there we go this is the one they gave us it's got the heat shrink on there I mean that's never it's never going to shrink to that size the eye is kind of big kind of the wrong size I think I'll just grab one from my own my own stuff so what I'll do sometimes if I'm worried about how much wire we can get inside, I'll cut it actually just a tiny bit longer, twist it, and I'll fold it in half and double it over just to make it a little bit thicker. I got a red one here. This is much more appropriate size for this size of wire. And what I will also do sometimes is actually cut the outside off here. Take the outside right off so it has nothing on there. Take my little piece of heat shrink slip this in there grab my crimpers crimp that in there and i'll put the heat shrink over the end I'm not going to bother getting the heat gun out just for one piece and there we go that's how i sealed that end like that just like that so we'll bring it back over here Snug that down and clean up our tools and get ready to test this. Well, there you have it. I really hope you enjoyed this video. You know, I've tried to be detailed as possible. Hopefully I didn't miss anything. I've had a few people in the comments say that I talk too much. I mean, I'm sorry. I'm just trying my best to help you guys out. If you have no idea what you're doing, hopefully these videos are basically, you can follow along and get through the installations of anything they do in any of my videos. Anyways, thanks so much for watching. Please consider hitting like, you know the deal. Share, subscribe to the channel, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks so much. Goodbye.